Well, hello there. Welcome to day one of Vlogtober. Hey guys, hey guys, hey guys, hey, 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 hey. Hello, hello. So today I thought for day one, I would do a fun little um, Halloween recipe for you guys. Um, this looks like it would be something really cool for like a kid's snack or just a cute snack, like if you're having a Halloween party or something like that. I did get this, I did see this uh, a while ago somewhere on the internet, probably Pinterest, but they have all kinds of cute little ideas like that, you know? So I just thought I'd share one with you guys and I'll show you what the ingredients are. So, and then I'm gonna have a couple to eat with you guys and just chat for a bit. How does that sound? Good? Okay. So <laughs> the first thing I bought here is these Weight Watchers. It's the only ones I could find. Uh, whole wheat English muffins so you will need some English muffins or some kind of round bread or something round that you can stick the toppings on whatever you want to do you know uh, it's up to you you will also need some olives of your choice again some kind of round salty vegetable um, you know these look like the ones with the pimentos look like eyes uh, so I chose the um, manzanilla olives with the pimentos in the center sorry itchy nose you will also need, my hands are clean, <laughs> sorta. All right, so you will also need to cut some cheese of your choice. You can use non-dairy, you can use Monterey Jack. I'm using mozzarella. So just cut them into strips like this because we are gonna be making pizza mummies. So um, it's gonna, you know, the bandages kind of thing. So you wanna make it look kind of like bandages. So you wanna cut them into strips. And you'll also need some kind of base sauce of your choice. I was looking at the sauces and I was just not feeling a really tomato-y. Um, this is tomato-y, but it's it's a sun-dried tomato pesto. So there's a lot of other flavors in there. So this is really nice. Just a jar of the Classico. If you're lazy, use the jar stuff like I am. So yeah, so I'm using this as my base sauce and uh, for the, the skin underneath. So yeah, so that's what I'm gonna use. So I'm going to show you an example of I know my, my cutting board looks gnarly. It's uh, ancient. <laughs> so I got like olive juice or something in my eye earlier and my eye's been irritated. Whew. All right, so I'm gonna take some of these. I'm gonna show you one, then I'm gonna assemble the rest. Um, one of each I'm gonna show you. Are you supposed to cut these? It's been so long since I've had an English muffin. <laughs> you know, I always get these confused with crumpets. Do you guys get those confused with crumpets? I'm gonna squish them down a bit because I like my um, pizza thin crust. <laughs> so, but you don't have to if you don't want to. So first we're gonna start with a mummy. Uh, gonna take some sauce. Take as much as you like. I really like sauce, so I'm gonna be liberal with mine. Okay. I'm gonna put sauce on here. And these are really simple too. I mean, if they weren't, I probably wouldn't be doing them. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna take a strip. He's gonna need a head bandage, so I'm gonna cut it here. Just like that, we're gonna put that there. We're gonna put two eyes. Oh, this is gonna be cute and tasty. For once, it's us eating the zombies, not the other way around. Or sorry, he's not a zombie. Then you're gonna go like that. Like that. I don't know. Do a pattern of your liking. Um, I'm not good at this stuff, apparently. <laughs> but, so you kinda end up with something like this, you see. You see what I mean? I don't want it to fall, but something like that. So, these smell amazing. I think I made a really good choice with the tomato pesto as the base. So of course I'm not gonna eat all these. You probably think I'm going to, <laughs> but I'm not. BB's gonna have some and there will be leftovers, you know? So yeah, the spider's head fell off, but whatever, you know. These look scary. Not because they're carbs, but because they're, <laughs> they're creepy. 
All right, let's see. Hmm. Well, October for me means just doing a video every day, so sometimes I'm going to wing it. I do have things planned on my calendar, but some things I have blank. So for those days, I don't know yet, but I'll do something. And uh, I'm going to try to do as many Halloween-y things, fall-themed things, like fall-themed recipes. Um, eat dinner with me kind of thing, you know. I had a nightmare last night and it woke me up. I, I've been up since 4 a.m. I couldn't go back to bed after this dream. It just really bothered me. I, um, I just, I, I, I know this girl, very sad, but she passed away last year and I've known her for a long time and she was in my dream and she was like, I was going with Rena. We were going to this amusement park it was all haunted um, themed rides or whatever and when I got to the entrance that friend or that girl that I knew that that had passed away she was at the front entrance with like a sign in book and she asked me my name and stuff and it was just weird and then she let us in and um, there was like a long you know like in a business like in a conference room there's like a long table um, and at the end of the table we had to sit down and it was really dark and it just felt haunted You know that feeling in your dream where you just know something's gonna happen. Well sure enough Enters the what enters the room is that creepy ass friggin nun From the movie the nun and I just for like I freaked out You ever get really scared in your nightmare? Like just root that that fear that like just ties knots in your gut and it just like ugh. <laughs> Hi Pete. Hi. <laughs> Hi Tess. So, so are you prepared to be scared? Meh. You believe in ghosts? Not really. Not at all? Not particularly, no. So the place we're going, just so you know, quickly, um, apparently there are uh, reports, it's called Ghost Hill, and it's in Lesqueville, Quebec, and it's like this little hill of like wooded area, and at the bottom there's like a creepy church, abandoned church, and apparently there's like reports of like, you know, apparently that church had like bodies in the basement, and it's like super haunted area. People have reported driving through, but then like ending up in the opposite direction. I don't know. It's really weird. There's like some really creepy stuff going on. So, um, I think we're going to go check it out. How about that? Since it's Halloween season and you know, I like that stuff. All right. <laughs> if anything bad happens to us, well, I guess I wouldn't be uploading this video, right? If anything bad happens. Unless it's uploaded from beyond the grave. That's true. Somebody finds the phone and uploads it. Ooh. Okay, but first we need to go get comics, so he has something to do. And uh, first we're going to get pumpkin spice latte because also it's in season. So we're on the highway. We're trying to find... This highway is not as creepy as I thought it would be. And there's like cars. I thought it would be like a deserted, creepy highway. It's actually not that creepy. <laughs> The ride back, there's like a creepy road we had to go on. Maybe we'll show you guys that. But I'm looking for like an abandoned church or something. Pete's is the cameraman right now. I don't know if we're going to find anything. You can see the map? Yep. Um, we're looking for like this ghost hill location. I don't know if it's even, the church is even still going to be there. The last I read about it, it was like 2010, so they may have demolished it. I'm not too sure about that, but I guess we'll find out, won't we? Yep. There's just nothing. Is this the church? It is. It doesn't look very abandoned. Lights. <laughs> what the heck? Can I turn here? I can. So 
maybe this is the church, guys. Let's see. The spooky Canada Post boxes. <laughs> Don't be sarcastic. <laughs> and yeah, this is the this is the church here. This is the church with the cemetery. So I know the church, but most churches do have cemeteries. Yeah, they all. It looks. This is the creepy ass and church. It looks kept, like it looks maintained. Like yeah. that does not look like an abandoned church. That looks like a church that's been painted recently, within well, the past I... couple of years. I wish there was somewhere we could go park. Like, is there... How do you get to the church? Yeah, I don't know. I don't think... There's got to be a way, right? Presumably. This might be Ghost Hill because it's on a hill. Okay, hold on. This is... This is the church that we found in Breckenridge, and apparently that's where it's supposed to be, like between Breckenridge and Lesville. Some websites say Breckenridge, some say Lesville, and there's like a church with a cemetery, and this has a cemetery. So this must be it. It Pete doesn't think it looks abandoned. I do because there's like no access to it, and it looks like it doesn't look very, I don't know. But it looks well maintained to me. Yeah, but it could be main, well maintained, but not in service. Like, you know what I mean? I don't know. It's just like trying to find a reflection of that. I think we're just gonna like leave it. I'm not gonna like park. There's nowhere. Like, I'm not gonna start walking up to. Do you think we should go for a walk up to it? No. Your call. <sighs> it's a highway, and it's kind of creepy. There's like no. Like, it's a pretty busy highway. There's constantly cars. So we'd have to be walking on the highway in the dark. I don't know if that's a good idea. What do you think? Like, if it had a little parking lot or something we could go into. Very well made, just around the back. And it's just, yeah, you get to play another street. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Okay, if we can figure it out, we'll maybe go up to the church and see but otherwise it's like locked up it looks like it's locked up so but yeah it's nine o'clock at night yeah <laughs> um but yeah all right guys so we're just gonna end the video here there's not really anything more exciting to see on the way home other than what you're seeing now we're on a kind of a windy road so Hey guys, how the heck are you? I'm kind of hyper right now, so brace yourself. I look tired, I know. I, let's just, I'm going through some stuff, okay? <laughs> this is, this is, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, I'll explain another time. Today, <laughs> my itchy eye. I figure, I don't think you can see it, but figure how can I look less zombie-like? I put a little bit of glitter liner. I don't know if it worked, probably not. So, I thought today I would do leftovers because, uh, well, I have a lot of leftovers and I really want to eat them up. So I figure, hey, let's do that. Um, <laughs> let's have a, let's eat dinner together, guys. So I have mafe. I know you guys have been asking for the recipe for this. Um, I will eventually put it down below. I don't know if I'll do it today, but I will do it. Um, do not worry about that, I promise. Um, this peanut, West African peanut stew uh, with carrots, potatoes, peanut sauce, chicken. It's delicious. I have some, some uh, also some jalapeno cheese croissants that need to be eaten. Uh, they go stale. And some applewood cheddar apple uh, applewood smoked cheddar slices that need to be eaten um they're gonna go bad and this is liquid um amino sprags so it comes in like a spray bottle so you can just kind of spray it on your stuff i know sodium and some sriracha yes i love sriracha ice water mm-hmm and a meal would not be a meal without my extreme beans. <laughs> so let's crack those babies open. 
and uh, let's make a croissant sandwich. What I'm basically gonna do is take a croissant and cut it open and hopefully not cut my hand open <laughs> like that. And then we're gonna take a piece of the applewood smoked cheddar like that. We're gonna cut it in half. We're gonna put it on the sandwich. And we're gonna eat it. Mmm. Be bite. Mmm. 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 All right. Now we're gonna eat. Give you a beauty bite of this. Beauty bite. Mmm. Mmm. I honestly could eat this every day. It's so good. Yeah. So yeah, one time when I was living in the group home with my friend, I'm still friends with her to this day. She's one of my best friends. Um anyway. We were in the group home and we were the most well behaved ones, so we got like certain perks. Like we gotta to go to conventions and stuff like that out of town. Well, one day we're sitting around, it was close to Halloween, and they're like, hey, there's this, like, haunted house thing run by a, a bunch of, uh, like, teenagers or whatever. They're raising money for something. Do you want to go check it out? And my friend and I were like, yeah, you know, cool, that's, that would be fun. We're picturing this, like, really awesome, like, the way they made it sound... It was like this really awesome, creepy, like really creepy haunted house. So we got all dressed up and all into it. We get there. It's like in a shed, a small shed. Um, we were the like only people at the time there, like literally all dressed up. I felt so foolish, but we were good sports and we went in and it was like, I, I was screaming and that's how... <laughs> Someone had a tape deck playing or like a CD playing with like, you know, that dollar store Halloween music playing. The hoo -hoo -hoo. That stuff scares me. I saw like probably a, an eight year old in a costume came out and spa and I screamed and like just anyway, near the exit um, as a thank you gift, they give you a granola bar. <laughs> By now, most people have seen the classic horror movie The Shining. And if you didn't, make it your next movie night. It's worth it, I promise. The Shining, based on the novel by famous horror writer Stephen King, is about a man named Jack Torrance who is a recovering alcoholic and in desperate need of a job. He decides to take a job as the seasonal caretaker of the Overlook Hotel and moves his family to Colorado for the winter months. The hotel is haunted, however, by many ghosts and the family soon find themselves in trouble. While The Shining is a work of fiction, the inspiration for the story came to Stephen King during his stay at the Stanley Hotel in the Colorado Rockies in 1974. When he and his wife stayed the night, the hotel was almost empty. King stayed in room 217, the room number he would later use as one of the most haunted rooms in his novel. While King didn't see any ghosts during his stay, he felt uneasy the whole time and ended up having a nightmare so terrifying that he started writing the novel, which would later become a classic masterpiece of horror fiction, and my personal favorite. The thing is, though, the Stanley Hotel is supposedly one of the most haunted locations in the U.S. that has been investigated by many paranormal investigators over the years. The Stanley, located in Estes Park, was opened in 1909. As it is so old, the hotel has reportedly witnessed more than a few deaths. The deceased are said to haunt the rooms and hallways of the Stanley to this day. If you are brave enough, you can attend a ghost tour that the Stanley offers throughout the year and do some paranormal investigating of your own. The following stories and pictures are reported by guests who have taken the tour themselves or who have spent the night and have been more than spooked by what they experienced. This first photo was taken by a woman named Stephanie Reidel while on one of the hotel's ghost tours. The photo was taken in the concert hall in the basement. Pictured is her tour guide at the bottom of the stairs, and beside him is what appears to be a little girl in a pink dress staring at the camera, her eyes red from the flash. This girl is thought to be one of the Stanley's most famous ghosts named Lucy. Lucy was a 13-year-old girl who supposedly ran away from home 
and squatted in the Stanley basement when it was still under construction many years ago. She was found by employees, though, and sent away from the hotel and out into the cold. It is said that temperatures reached well below zero that night, and Lucy froze to death. Could this be the restless spirit of Lucy in the picture? This next picture is another creepy picture taken on one of the hotel's ghost tours. It was taken by a man named John Mosling, who was there with his family. The photo shows an ethereal little girl going down the stairs, and one on the other staircase going up. The unsettling part is, Mosling said there were no little girls in their party of 11 people. Strange goings-on were reported not only by those on the Stanley Spirit Tours, but also from guests who dared to stay the night in one of the hotel's many rooms, many of which are haunted. One such guest reported that in the middle of the night, he and his partner were disturbed by the sound of a room service trolley just outside their door, but when he opened the door, there was no one there. Later on that night, he heard a woman laughing just inches away from his ear as he tried to sleep. Creeped out but finally able to get back to sleep, the guest wasn't asleep for long before he heard a loud bang. The noise was so loud that this time, the entire floor reportedly heard it. But just like the trolley, there was nothing in the hall when the guests investigated the noise. These are just a few of many reported paranormal incidents at the Stanley Hotel. Despite its creepy history, the hotel is a historic landmark and a stunningly beautiful edifice. What do you think? Would you stay there for a night? Thanks for watching. We have all felt a bit uneasy while driving down a spooky looking road at night. We lock our doors a second and third time just to be sure, but ultimately, we are able to reassure ourselves that there is no such thing as ghosts and creatures of the night, and the most we have to worry about is a deer darting out in front of us. Well, apparently there are roads where many witnesses have experienced things they cannot explain. The following are three of the most haunted roads in America. Enjoy. Archer Road, Chicago, Illinois. Archer Road, also known as Archer Avenue, is said to be one of the most haunted areas of Chicago. This long road passes through many different bodies of water and creepy forested areas, but one of the most notable and most haunted areas that Archer Road will lead you to is Resurrection Cemetery. There is a famous ghost who resides there. She goes by the name of Resurrection Mary. It is believed that Resurrection Mary is the restless spirit of a young woman named Mary Bergovi who died in a car crash on her way home from what is now the Willowbrook Dance Hall one evening in 1934. She was only 21 years old. She was wearing her favorite gown that night, and most witnesses who have seen the ghost claim that she is dressed in a white flowing gown as if forever wandering the lonely stretch of Archer Road looking for someone to take her home from the dance hall. A man named Jerry Payless claimed to have met Resurrection Mary at a nearby dance hall in 1939. Jerry claimed he danced all night with a woman who was ice-cold to the touch. At the end of the soiree, he offered her a ride home. The woman asked him to take her to Archer Road. When they got close to Resurrection Cemetery, she insisted that he stop the car. When he turned to ask her why, she asked him not to follow her. She got out of the vehicle and started walking toward the cemetery gates. According to Jerry, the woman vanished before his eyes as she got close to the gates. Several cab drivers have also reported picking up a young woman who had asked to be taken to Resurrection Cemetery only to vanish from the back seat. For this reason, Resurrection Mary is known around Chicago as the Ghost Hitchhiker, and if you decide to take a drive one night down Archer Road and see anyone on the side of the road, it may be wise to avoid offering them a ride. Morrow Road, Algonac, Michigan. Whatever haunts Morrow Road is somewhat of a legend. This tale dates back to the 1800s. It is believed that one cold night, a frantic mother goes out searching for her lost toddler son and froze to death while looking for him. Some believe that the boy was kidnapped and his body disposed of in the water just beneath the Morrow Road Bridge, while others believe that Native Americans of the area murdered the woman, which is why those who have seen her ghost reported that she was wearing a bloody white nightgown. In the 1950s, the urban legend of the Morrow Road monster was created. It was believed that the boy was snatched from his bed and taken into the woods and eaten by a creature. However, there is no evidence to support any of these claims. Regardless of whatever did happen to the mother and child, it is reported that it was at least tragic enough for her restless spirit to haunt the area for many years. I was surprised to find so many witness accounts while researching the hauntings of Morrow Road. All of the stories had common elements. Most reported seeing the apparition of a woman in a white bloody gown, or alternatively, a light blue nightgown, probably the last thing she was wearing the night she went out searching for her son. Instead of a bloody nightgown, sometimes she has bloody hands. A few have reported that bloody handprints have slammed against their windshield glass as they drove along the road. It is said that if you park your car on the bridge and beep your horn three times, the woman appears, bloody, and asks you if you've seen her son. The sound of a crying child is usually heard as well just under the bridge. As a matter of fact, the bridge on Morrow Road is called Crybaby Bridge. It is also common for green spectral orbs to appear in the forested areas that line the road. So if you're brave enough to visit Morrow Road yourself, be sure you stop on Crybaby Bridge and honk three times. Let me know if you meet any ghosts. Haynesville Woods, Route 2A, Haynesville, Maine. Route 2A is a highway that runs through the Haynesville Woods located in Haynesville in Aerostock County. This road is one of the most dangerous roads in Maine, especially in the winter months. The road has a particularly sharp curve, making it especially dangerous when the roads are icy. As a result, the road has claimed many lives. So many that country singer Dick Curless even wrote a song about Route 2A called A Tombstone Every Mile. 
One of the most popular ghosts, according to locals, is that of a woman seen on the side of the road. The woman appears to need help, and when someone pulls over to ask if she is alright, the woman says that she and her husband have been in a car accident just up the road. At this point, it is reported that the woman vanishes in the thin air. Another tragedy occurred on this dangerous road on August 22, 1967, when two 10-year-old girls were walking along the side of Route 2 when they were struck by a transport truck and killed instantly. Some witnesses claim to have seen a young girl wandering on the side of the road. They stop to pick her up, and she does get in the vehicle, but vanishes from the back seat only moments later. Could this be the spirit of one of the girls that has been unable to move on? Thanks for watching. Hey guys, so Pete and I are at Upper Canada Village at Pumpkin Inferno. So we're gonna go walk around and it's a very impressive display. So we are gonna show you guys the evening we have tonight. So I hope you guys enjoy. Hi Pete. Hi. <laughs> Hi Pete. Huh? <laughs> Hi Pete. <laughs> it's like beautiful and creepy at night here. <laughs> The trees are really nice, eh? Hornosaurus. Hornosaurus? Yep. Oh. Hornosaurus. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that a triceratops? Yeah, triceratops. He's always <laughs> horny on Maine. <laughs> I actually prefer you filming because you waddle less than I do. <laughs> so. <laughs> and that church is just creepy looking. <laughs> it's a red light, especially. Yeah. Put anything <laughs> in a red light and look, it's gonna look less, uh, look unsettled. Oh, cool. That's pretty neat. <laughs> if I ever get married, <laughs> that's, that's what our wedding, that's what my wedding's gonna look like. I'm joking. <laughs> I, I wouldn't do that. That'd be cultural appropriation. What's up? Are you cold? You look cold. I'm a little chilly. Your cheeks look chapped with coldness. So I'm gonna end the video here. Peace just ran into the bank. Um, yeah, I'm gonna end the video here. So I had a really good time tonight. You're gonna see a lot more different things on my channel. Um, I wanna start doing things instead of just living in my head and thinking I wish I could do this. I'm just gonna do it. You know, like tonight, I kinda stepped out of my comfort zone. Um, it was difficult at some points to walk around, but it wasn't as bad. You know, when I let go of that fear and I just did it, it was like, we walked around for about an hour and 10 minutes um, total. And there, I sat down once for like literally only three three minutes or so. There was like a bench. And I thank you so much for watching. Um, you know, people are asking if I'm gonna be doing mukbangs. Probably not <laughs> anymore. Um, if I do anything food related, I'm gonna still do like what I eat in a days and recipes and it's gonna be healthy food. It's gonna be always healthy food. Um, unless I lose a lot of, unless I lose a good chunk of weight and I have like something small cheat, but probably not for a very while, a long while, you know, um. Cold grape juice and here, what can we name this guy? Let's name him Marshall and I'm, that's inspired by what I'm about to talk about. Mm.